What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy L. Turner and today I'm going to give you a hopefully brief look into my art background. Okay, thanks for tuning in again everybody. So yeah, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to try to give you guys a look into my art into my own art history. This is technically a viewer question from Marnice Nicole, who is an artist herself. I will link you to her sites in the box below. Uh, yeah, she has also been chronicling her journey as an artist and we have become social media friends. So yeah, I can't believe it's taken me this long. I think I'm about what, 11 episodes in and I'm just now explaining kind of my origin story <laughs> so forgive me for that um speaking of this being the 11th episode what the fuck can you believe that i'm showing a little bit of consistency i can't believe it's really happening and i'm showing you guys this these things about my art life when i first started this channel i was really hesitant because I just didn't really feel comfortable on camera. I, I felt like I kept, I don't know, I felt like I was just stiff and just, it just really wasn't interesting to me. But I, at the same time, I also wanted to start this channel to give you guys a just different look into who I am, my personality. I mean, there's only so much you can get from just a static image in a painting, you know what I mean? Or even my blog posts that I share on my website. So, Here's this channel to give you a little more of me. And yeah, 11 episodes in. All right, let's get into it. First off, I wanna apologize. I know this is a few days late. Uh, <laughs> I've honestly, I've been trying to just enjoy the summer. Uh, last week I got a little bit busy. I've been working a lot. I also went to a wedding last weekend yeah it's that season you know so all of that is happening and i didn't exactly carve out enough time for me to film something so here it is a little late but i hope you enjoy it anyway i've also been trying to get outside more i don't know if you can tell but i'm a little bit darker because i've been having some beach time and just hanging out a lot outside, taking walks, things like that. Also made a new painting this past week. I couldn't get it together. Can you see that? Yeah, so with last month being June and it being Pride Month, I thought, mm, of course, Rainbow Heart, why not show a little bit of support and or acknowledgement I mean it's not really much it's just a painting so I don't think it's really changing the world at all but I definitely was inspired to put my hat in to all of the acknowledgement and celebration and so yeah that I came up with that rainbow heart uh, where am I on the spectrum I don't I don't know if I can tell you that right now Though I can say I've been trying to decide if I'm going to try to get to the dick this summer, which <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you would think you would think that that would be a pretty easy decision, right? Yes or no. Do you or don't you? But here's the thing about like 99.9% with, with like a 0.1% margin of error of people are trash and they're just not worth the time. On the other side of the coin, there are a lot of fine, cute, interesting people that are very accessible. All I could do is just step outside. Like, what do I do? <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of this really tough decision of do I want to try to put myself out there and be open to people or just mind my business, stay inside and paint? I don't know, man. So, yeah, I have no idea <laughs> where exactly I'm going to mean. Uh, though, you know what? I take that back because at this point I can say that my answer is no. I just don't want to be bothered by anybody. I mean, just 
here's the thing. I'm sure by now, if you're, I'm 33 now, All I, what I can say is the more you live life, the more you realize that plot twist, everyone sucks. And it's just not really worth it. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell by now, uh, but I am dead inside. Shit, that's the reason why I gotta paint these fucking hearts is in memoriam of when I gave a fuck. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get into the actual topic at hand, which is my origin story, okay? So, uh, I have had formal education. It's been a while since I, since I have taken a class. But, uh, yeah, when I at first decided that I was going to go to school for art, I went to a school called Maryland College of Art and Design. It was in Silver Spring, Maryland, because uh, I was living in Maryland at the time. So I went there. It was a two-year art school. And uh, though I did take a lot of the generic painting and drawing classes, you know, the fine art stuff, I focused more on graphic design because I thought, oh, it'll be easy, easier for me to get a job, you know? So that's what I studied there. I didn't really get into fine art stuff until a few years later so um okay i think uh, it, it's worth to show you worth it to show you guys one painting i don't have many paintings or, or work that that i've saved uh, from college but i do have this one this one i hope you can see it in the frame if not i'll just put it either beside me or towards the end of the video but um yeah this piece right here was one that I did in a figure painting class when I was in college. I think this might have been, I don't know, I might have been about 18, 19 years old when I made this. Uh, I keep this and I love sharing it, <clears throat> excuse me, because I, um, I consider this kind of the grandmother painting to the way that I paint now. So this was an assignment in the class where the professor took pictures of each of us and then just told us, to just have at it, just paint however we wanted to. I think this might have been the final project that we did. And I chose a more expressive route. I, I Even back then, I realized that I was really interested in exploring color and um, <clears throat> just kind of the emotive qualities of it symbolic qualities of color and, and all of that and I really with this project I really wanted to kind of play with that and push that for for me at that time and so yeah it this actually um I think I was the only one in the class that, that kind of took this route and I didn't realize then that maybe I was kind of onto something it just felt like oh well, I I'm just gonna try this yeah I wish I had <laughs> that 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 kind of innocent, open, free mind to my work that I that I did uh, back when I was 19. I mean, not that I don't now, it's just a little more structured. I think I know a lot more now, and so I may tend to overthink things. And so, yeah, back then, it was just like, I'm an artist, and I can do anything, and I'm learning, and it's great. You know, you're, you're just so green to everything. And uh, I now it's, it's a little more methodical. So I do wish I kind of retained a little bit more of uh, just that, that, that fearlessness and, and just that willingness to just throw myself into something new. But anyway, that is that piece. And then from there, uh, after college, I just wanted to work. I did not... Uh, formally continue in education or to get a four-year degree or whatever because at that point I just wanted to work and have independence in my own place and car and all of that so that's what I did so I focused on that I was able to do a couple of graphic design jobs post-college so um, at that point that was kind of enough for me and I was able to just kind of set myself up to start my life, you know, move out of my mom's house and start uh, being you know, a, a self-sufficient adult. And so that was where where, where my mind was. And so it took, uh, a few, took a few years, maybe about, I don't know, maybe around 2009, 2010, something like that, when I was feeling that itch. 
Um, the job that I had at the time, the one that I still have, is not very creative. I mean, I use design software every day, but I'm not really designing anything. So uh, I think back then I was starting to realize how pent up I was. I needed an outlet. I needed to be creative. And uh, I was also going through my quarter life crisis. So if you've gone through that, then you know what, I'm, what I mean. It, there was a lot of uh, digging into myself to figure out, well, what is it that I need to do to set myself up to have this fulfilled life, you know, self-actualization and all of that. So um, I just started remembering how it felt when I was in school and painting and how I wanted to be a portrait artist. That was my dream job for so long. So I just decided, all right, I don't really want to go back to college, but if I want to be an artist, I don't have to do that. I can just take classes here and there. So I would just save up and find different classes, either online or I don't know, just you know, people, just at different, they were just non-credit classes that I would just find in the area. And just depending on whatever the class was teaching, that's what I trained it towards. Because I just want, I knew I just needed to get better at painting. I hadn't, at that point I hadn't painted in a while and I needed to increase my confidence with that. So I just invested in, in classes whenever I could. Uh, and I didn't mind making that investment. So I would just take uh, just one-off classes or workshops at, at different um, institutions. So uh, one of the main places that I guess I found the most um, challenging, the most rewarding were workshops that I took at um, atelier schools. So that's a very specialized kind of school of painting where they uh, teach more traditional style of painting. It's heavily focused on high level of drawing, painting, you know, flesh tones and likenesses, proportions, things like that. It's, uh, they, there, there are a few of them in, in the country. And uh, yeah, you would have to look online to see if there's one near you, but um, they tend to be a little closer to major cities. But I will put uh, a couple links of the schools that I've checked out below. Um, yeah, there, there's one that I've that, that I went to on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. So yeah, again, it is a bit of an investment, but I didn't mind making it because that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a better painter. I want new experiences. I wanted to be taught by some of you know, the the best in the craft. So. Um, so yeah, but I will say that I think I probably would have gotten more out of that kind of tutelage if I actually enrolled in the school and uh, actually went through their program because to get such kind of like a, a truncated version of that style of teaching and, and painting in a workshop of maybe what, four or five days, I mean, it's... A lot it's really intense and it's overwhelming and um, yeah if you aren't on kind of like a medium to high level of painting you're gonna feel like shit <laughs> I'm just putting it out there but if you are curious uh, I will link you below and feel free to ask me questions I am totally fine with that so let me move on to this next piece I want to show you in my journey as a painter and so uh, this was one, this painting is one of the classes that I took, just one of the one-off classes that I found, I think via Craigslist maybe, when I was living in uh, Maryland, Virginia. And uh, yeah, so this was me still learning and trying to be a better painter. This is totally different from how I paint now, but this is setting me up for that. So again, kind of focusing on uh, drawing skills, you know, careful blending, getting a likeness of the model, and paying attention to lights and shadows and all of that. And yeah, just very, just academic approach to painting, not much room for expression at all. And I was okay, because I, I think I wasn't really it wasn't really in my mind at the time. It was just about learning 
and honestly i thought at the time that this was the route that i was gonna go kind of like this uh contemporary realism kind of approach to painting i thought that that was the only way that a painting looked good and um it's just not true you can do whatever the fuck you want but at the time that was what resonated with me painting like this and uh that was those were the classes that i sought out and uh yeah i think this painting kind of uh marks a, a bit of a turning point is when i started to realize oh okay i'm getting pretty decent at this and to just keep going uh pay attention to those moments for yourself honestly uh because you'll need to refer to those moments as you continue to develop. And yeah, you need to um, keep those benchmarks close to your heart. So, because a lot, you're not, you're not always going to have somebody who's going to tell you you're doing a good job. You have to know that for yourself. So this painting is a painting that, that I did in a workshop at one of the atelier schools that I mentioned earlier. This one was... Um, in a school in Philadelphia. And it was the toughest class that I ever <laughs> taken in my entire life. Again, I mean, that style of painting and teaching is, it's really strict. And it's kind of like there's, I mean, of course, everyone has their own hand of painting. So, but but it's, the you, you have to really, pay attention I mean there's not so much you can, uh, deviation you can do a, a, in a school like that it's all about getting it accurate <laughs> getting skin tones accurate proportions accurate you know that the realism so yeah I th this was probably the only class or workshop in my adult life that made me cry <laughs> It was so tough. This painting was the toughest one that I've had to do, but I came out way stronger and, and better for it, even if it took me a week or two <laughs> to realize it. Um, but yes, <clears throat> uh, this one, I mean, it's not really meant to be anything more than an exercise. So that's something to think about too, if you are continuing your education outside of college. I mean, you're not always gonna knock it out of the park, but you're there to learn and not every piece is going to be meant to be a piece that you're going to sell at, at the end of it okay so so yes yeah this is this painting this is still again me focusing on realism style of painting and yeah this also as you can tell is a painting that was made with a limited palette if you're familiar with the way that I paint now you <laughs> should know how difficult that would be for me. Restraint is not one of my strong points when it comes to color. I love to go ham on it. So in this class, we use what's called a Zorn's palette, I think is what it's called. It's where you use just four tubes of paint. I think it's black, white, yellow, and red. I think that's all we were allowed to use. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to kind of tone it a, a bit, I guess. Or, or for the underpainting really, but as far as uh, starting and completing the painting, you were only allowed to use just those four colors. And I tell you, it was a fucking challenge, but here it is, it looks like a person. <laughs> and yeah, if you really wanna challenge yourself, try that. You will learn uh, about color mixing real quick. And so the final painting that I'm going to show you all in my origin story is this painting here. I really hope you can see that. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I made this painting about two years ago. And yeah, this was, I was well into kind of discovering my own style, my own voice as an artist at the time. It's really cool to, so I think... I've shared this piece online a few times. I think I've only shown it in public maybe about twice. Uh, it is a self-portrait, as I'm sure you can tell. And what I love is comparing this one to the previous Blue Girl that I showed you, because it, 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 it not only is it showing how I came around full circle, 
But just comparing that to this, how I started at what, 19 years old, and into this painting at maybe 30, 31, two completely different stages in my life, two completely different approaches to painting. It, shit, two completely different artists, I would say, at the time. I'm no, I'm nothing like how I was when I was 19 to now at, at 33. So, um, so yeah, this definitely kind of marked where I was feeling way more confident about who I am as a person, as an artist, what I want to say, how I want to paint. And uh, this, this one is really special to me as well. Yeah, the previous blue girl and this blue girl for sure. Uh, I don't know why I just insist on painting myself blue. <laughs> Maybe any of you psychology majors may want to pick that apart, but um, yeah, yeah, this it this also kind of marked a certain mood that I wanted to uh, portray at a time, and yeah, yeah, I think it also goes to show you're comparing the previous painting and this painting that if you want to be an artist. You can do it. You don't have to come out the gate knowing everything. I mean, the only niggas that do that are like those anomalies, you know, those prodigies that are just born with this just amazing skill. And fuck them, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, the rest of us have to really push and learn and and grow and, and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And um, that's all you have to do is just stick with it, stay open keep learning, you know, immerse yourself into your craft and read and take classes, you know what I mean? Allow somebody to, to uh, show you something that maybe you didn't know before, you know what I mean? Or, or maybe didn't try before, experiment a little bit. Uh, have that, you know, 19 year old self or that child self kind of take over a little bit and be curious about materials and and subject matter and nature, just whatever. I think I'm starting to get a little bit <laughs> hippie right now, but but really, I mean, hopefully you get the gist of that. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this episode. Thank you for uh, hanging in there. Thanks for watching all of my vlogs so far. I hope you're able to learn a little bit more about me and who I am as an artist in this episode. Uh, for everything else that I am doing or have done, I will definitely invite you to visit me on my website, tracylturner.com. I have a blog on there that I keep up pretty regularly, and I'm always directing people to it because it gives a lot more insight into me and my work and how I create my work or how I relate to my own work. So. If you're ever curious about that, definitely go there and check out the blog. Leave me some comments. Let me know you were there. Or, uh, or keep it to yourself, whatever. I don't fucking care. But I do hope you go check it out. There's also links to my Etsy store where you can find art prints and see uh, what original art is available for purchase. So, um, And a bunch of other stuff. So definitely go visit. And also, please visit me on Instagram. My handle is Tracy L. Turner. I show lots of works in progress, and um, I sometimes share funny art memes or, or whatever. I just try to keep it fun on there and uh, just give you those are just little, basically, mini blog posts where I just give you bites into my art life. So, if you aren't following me on there, please go do so. And uh, as usual, please subscribe to my channel. If, if you see something you like, uh, please like it or comment, share with another artist that you care about or just anyone that you think could get something out of this channel and listening to me. Like, I fucking know what I'm talking about. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you feel so moved to share, subscribe, please do that. I will love you forever. All right. Until the next video, y'all, hope you enjoy the rest of your week and do something fun, okay? See ya.